Good morning, sir. Good morning. Have a seat. Thank you, sir. Okay, so Ritesh, uh, uh, as I can see, you are from Ranchi, Hajjharagan. Yes, sir. And uh, your uh, optional is public administration. Yes, sir. And then you have done your uh, batch BTEC, electronics and communication. Yes. All right. And uh, you have also reached the level of uh, interview. Yes. Uh, on two, uh, on one occasion. Sir, right? twice. This is this will be my third. Interview. This will be the third one. Yes. Okay. All right. So, how many marks did you get in the last two interviews? Uh, sir, in my first interview, I got one forty-five marks. Second time, I got one seventy marks. Okay. 140 and 170. Yes. Okay. Good. And uh, then coming to your uh, hobbies, as I can see that watching football matches. Yes. And uh, especially Premier League and uh, UEFA Champions, UEFA Championships League, analyzing football matches and playing football. So essentially, football is your. Yes. Yeah. So you have taken care that you will only keeping the minimum number of hobbies. In your DAF. So my hobby revolves around football. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> all right. So, uh, public administration? Yes. Okay. So, can you tell me some of the public policies which are the result of uh, intervention by judiciary, one, and intervention by the pressure groups or the unofficial actors? Two examples at least. One at the intervention of judiciary, a public policy was uh, uh, formulated by the government, and on the on account of the pressures, pressure groups, the NGOs, the unofficial actors, some policies. Since public administration is your subject, so therefore I was tempted to ask this question to you. So the first is related to the women empowerment and the judiciary came out with Visaka guideline and after that uh, the government uh, government came out with sexual harassment at workplace 2013. Okay, all right. And the second policy is related to the RTI when, when the anti-corruption movement started in Rajasthan then it resulted in implementation of the RTI. Okay, all right. Uh, now coming to uh, some other parts, uh, since you happen to be from Jharkhand, if, you, if I were to ask you to... Uh, delineate three things, three reasons or uh, three advantages uh, of this becoming a separate state. What has it, what are the things where it has progressed? Three things after uh, achieving the independent state mm -hmm. status. So the first is uh, related to the people, the local people. And initially, sir, they were when when it was part of Bihar, they were working in restaurants, petrol pumps. But now they are opening up the restaurants, petrol pump. They are taking up MSME. So the entrepreneur activities among the local people has increased. Uh, the second is, sir, that uh, the Patna was capital. When, when so is it on account of becoming a separate state? How it is related, correlated to its becoming a separate state? You said the entrepreneurship or prosperity in the region has improved. Yes. They were earlier working as workers. Now they are owning the places. Yes, sir. How, what exactly was that factor which actually uh, encouraged them to take up self-employment activities? Is it directly relatable to the fact that they have become a separate state now? So the policies are now focused on, on the state of Jharkhand. Mm. Like the increase in uh, the roads have improved. Mm. The, the education facilities have improved and I see the health, especially the mm -hmm. uh, penetration of the Aganwadi uh, workers that are there and they are providing health services. Mm -hmm. So these things are now uh, improved compared to when, when it was part of Bihar. Okay, all right. Uh, now coming to uh, some other aspects. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, the social media, uh, some people have said that social media is making us less social. Do you agree to that? So to an extent, it is making us uh, uh, less social because we always believe in interaction, uh, interaction, the physical interaction. The mm. social media has resulted in increase in virtual in, uh, uh, interaction. The screen time is increasing. And then we see that work from home is, is also increasing. So mm. one dimension that is the physical interaction, sir, it is reducing. Okay. Uh, one more thing which I will ask you is that uh, 
there is a mobile company brand that is Nokia. Yes, sir. There are two other brands which are equally important. One is Samsung, the other is the Apple. Now, Nokia remained uh, the world leader for almost 12 years. And then it was the, the space was taken over by the other two companies. Yes, sir. What went wrong? Sir, Nokia was highly dominating at that point of time. The phone was very much visible with local people and also in the movies. But the things that are wrong, went wrong is that at that point of time, an innovation happened. And iOS, the development of iOS and Android, they do not shift it to Android. The Samsung, which were copying uh, Nokia and Apple at that point of time, they, they uh, shifted their uh, uh, innovation, they shifted their uh, uh, operating system to Android. And, and it resulted in improvement okay, in that is one. What is the second reason? One is this technological change which had happened at that point of time. Any other technological change also happened simultaneously, which uh, you know moved the, the Apple and the Samsung much ahead of Nokia. Sir, it has to do with the touch screen. Yeah, touch screen and smartphones. Yes. Absolutely. My last question would be, uh, what is your opinion or take on the national asset monetization pipeline? Do you think it's a wise step to sell or if not sell, uh, rent out on lease the family silver, which has been created after a huge amount of, uh, you know, a lot of perseverance and uh, so many uh, five year plans, the public sector undertakes came into being and they have served a social uh, purpose and social obligation. And suddenly you start, uh, you know, selling them on lease. Do you think it's a wise step? Pros and cons. So the pros is that uh, uh, there are assets which lie idle and, and which are not utilized uh, efficiently. For example, sir, there are stadiums. Mm. Uh, for, for stadiums are used for playing match. But now if, if those things are provided to the private sector, they can use it for exhibition, for event management. And it can, it can provide an employment opportunities. The government can earn the money from it. And, and those things uh, the government can use for social and physical infrastructure. Mm. When it comes to the... Uh, uh, disadvantage part is that uh, that is the only advantage uh, any other advantage what is the government going to get out of that why did it why why in doing it in the first place and and what is the purpose i mean that is the underlying purpose why they decided to do that okay you can you can read so, so it can uh, bring okay. investment all right it will to, to to muster up resources uh, resources it can to be to be in implement to be <laughs> invested in other areas of the economy yes, that is education and uh, health yes what are the cons Sir, uh, very often see that uh, the acquisition of a land it, it take place and also the transfer to the private sector it result in, in a lot of litigation so there can be a long gestation period the second is attracting the private investors in this area hmm. and third that there is a fear among people that it might result in uh, privatization of these assets in long term. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ashokji. Hmm. In uh, Jharkhand, yes, what are the commonly faced uh, social issues by the children? So the first is, is malnutrition. Go on. Yes. Sir. Can you can you also give some idea of how much mal malnutrition is there? Yes, sir. The and stunting and wasting are about forty percent. And and also problem related to the health. There is inequity in health. Uh, the health health infrastructure is is concentrated in the urban area. So like. There are villages which are very much close to no, the forest. Problems specific to children, social issues related to children. No other thing? Sorry, sir, I'm not able to recall it. Yeah, right. Children are very safe there, therefore, yeah. I can say. Children are very safe in Jharkhand, that means. No, so ch children are not that, that <laughs> not, safe. Uh, not then safe. what are the issues? Uh, sir, overall issues, I would say uh, from, from in the health sector. Health, you have already sector, mentioned, uh, yes, in the malnutrition. Sector, in, in the law and order problem, <coughs> like sometimes we say that violence against uh, children, that is there in the, in the local area. 
violence against yes. children why people uh, kill children or what? trafficking trafficking uh, trafficking could be one yes and uh, so the education part the quality of in the educational uh, schools mm-hmm. uh, the infrastructure part is not that good the, uh, now what are the uh, administrative structures uh, in place in jharkhand or nationwide in other states to take care of the social problems of children in general so the first is prevention of crime against children is there then and the, uh, prevention of what crime against children post quite sir the second is sir, related to the human rights no, i am asking Act. about the structure the adam structure so it can be divided into police and and like the civil administration and the courts when it comes to the police sir they are generally for everybody including children yes what you are saying but specifically for children sorry sir i'm not able to recall it uh, okay now uh, president uh, president's elections are uh, going to be held uh, very soon who are the uh, voters for president's election sir uh, mps and the mld the mps in the parliament uh, and and the mld sir what about mlcs sir mlcs are not there are not there yes. and uh, what is the uh, how is the value of vote of each mla or mp is counted uh, sir i am not able to recall it and in one word in one single phrase how is the uh, uh, counting of uh, votes done sir it is it is based on the single transferable vote yes and the fifth one right. is uh, wins that, the election yes that's it. that's it. Uh, okay very good now uh, what is e waste so these are the waste generated by the electronic products yes. like the vehicles are what is the policy products? regarding e waste handling so mm. the first is related to the grading of the electronic waste grading uh, grading uh, the different component are graded and based on that they are discarded what are the grades a b c d or 1 2 3 4 color coding color coding, color coding. Yes. so what colors sir i am not able to recall the, that so what is the policy then the second is related to integration of the Uh, informal sector and third also sir extended pro, uh, producer responsibility like those who are producing it uh, they had uh, to take back uh, uh, from the retailers take back uh, from the retailers like if they are coming in like then they have to take it but the retailer would not have it the consumer would have it uh, yes sir the consumer the consumer my my mobile when it has lost its Um, completed its life it will be in my hands not in re- retailers hands so there are retailers also like there are um, cassify other other companies that are coming in and, and like we can sell the product to them and and the company has to uh, take those those uh, used mobile phones hmm okay thank you thank you sir okay ritesh you are a fan of football yes so tell me what was this fifa gate a few years ago Yeah, sir. It was related to the bidding of uh, the World Cup, related to the Qatar World Cup. Yeah. So, uh, so, was so the... it was seen that the favoritism was 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 provided by the Steve Blatter, and and also, sir, the second is related to the human rights violations that happened in Qatar. So in which year this happened? This was discovered. Sir, exactly. I am not able to recall. And who are the persons who were involved? Uh, sir, Steve, a former uh, president of the FIFA, Steve Blatter, was there. There, and he is currently in jail. Mm-hmm. Who else? Sir, I am able to recall his name. Okay. Now, uh, can you tell me what are the important functions of Reserve Bank of India? Sir, the first is it it acts act as a it provide uh, uh, the gas uh, to the government. Second, sir, to no, the it, it has it provide uh, it provide. Uh, Uh, currencies to uh, to the government like uh, currencies budget. to the government. Yes, sir. 
second is sir like it act as a bankers uh, bank like for for the government or for the banks also it takes uh, it provide loan to the bank it takes loan from it then also sir it manage the monetary policy there is a monetary policy committee Mm-hmm. Fourth is sir, the lender of the last resort. Like if some bank is is not able to perform well, then mm-hmm. the RBI lend money to us. And fifth sir, it also uh, print money, mm-hmm. and and also it and manage the contingency reserve. So what was your first thing providing cash to the government, and now you're saying printing money. What are these functions? Uh, sir, broadly all these functions are are covered by the Reserve Bank of India. Does it provide cash to the government? So security transaction, it 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 does mm-hmm. does it, okay. it does the security transaction. And what do you mean by bankers bank? Uh, so it means that uh, the banks that are there, the commercial banks mm-hmm. that are there. So for them, uh, it provide guidelines, it provide loans like the. It airport. provides regulatory framework yes. for the entire banking system. Yes. Okay, <laughs> now if you are. If you have the powers, yes. then what schemes will you initiate to help the poorest of the poor and the marginal marginalized people in the country? Sir, there are already a lot of schemes, and I will try to implement those things. The first is Mandrega. Mm-hmm. It will relate to poverty elevation, the public distribution system through which I will provide food, and mm-hmm. for children, sir, a mid-level scheme. For women, sir, I will ensure that there is uh, institutional deliveries for the newborn kids, the immunization programs, mm-hmm. and, and also, sir, uh, I will ensure that the law and order problem is good. Mm-hmm. Like the police stations are uh, maintained well. Uh, there is there is a uh, uh, number of uh, po- uh, women police personnel. The FIRs are well maintained. Good. So you would concentrate on implementing these schemes mm-hmm. rather than implementing something new. Uh, yes, sir. I will try to concentrate. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now, can you tell me what are the three fundamental contributions or fundamental, you know, factors which contributed to the global economic prosperity? And I'm not talking of today; I'm talking in the historical terms. Three fundamental factors which transformed the world and led to economic prosperity. So the first is industrial revolution. Yes, it brought a lot of yes. technological yes. Uh, changes. Exactly. The second is uh, the private sector participation. The capitalism, which induced uh, that the, the private sector participated. The capitalism. What is connected with that? Uh, sir, as the private sector uh, participated. No, the theory of Adam Smith. Yes, sir. Uh, wealth of the nation. Wealth of the nation. Uh, yes. That concept which gave sir in the, invisible hand and the third one the so third is trade liberal liberalization the globalization that happened yes and technology you can say now Tibet is is you know now under China's control but Tibet is central to our relations with China yes can you explain to me how. So because of its strategic position, that it is located in 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 between uh, mainland China and India, so like we have seen that uh, the Chinese invasion has never happened from the Indian side because of the Himalaya as it protect India also. Mm-hmm. So so uh, in this way, sir, I think the strategic position because of which Tibet is important. Tibet has been important for India for a variety of reasons, but so the water facilities. Mm-hmm. Sir, I will learn about it. Yeah, Tibet actually occupation of Tibet by China has created problem with India and China between India and China. When Tibet was a new independent country, we never had a border with China. The whole process starts from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Vicky, yes, sir. Your father is in police service. Uh, sir, he has retired. He has retired. <clears throat> Suppose you also get into Indian police service. Hmm. Then what will be your challenges? 
present IPS office? Sir, it can be broadly classified <coughs> into the challenges at the ground level. The first is like we see that very often people fear to to, uh, to go to the police station. So maintaining a proper infrastructure in the police, ensuring that the uh, helpline that problem are there. is of infrastructure or uh, about the uh, attitude. Sir, attitude part is also there, but sir, infrastructure, the number of personnel, uh, like uh, if, if someone is approaching the police station, so a fire is registered. And, and second, sir, related to uh, the attitudinal ch uh, changes, mm -hmm. very often we see that uh, out of pressure, uh, there is there is human right violations against the citizen. So, so try to ensure community policing. That's all. And, 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 and also, sir, related to the accountability. To ensure that the uh, right from a lower level uh, police official uh, until the higher level, the accountability is maintained, and that is a proper proper communication and coordination in the structure. When public feel very happy with the police, when they are you see satisfied, what is the criteria? So generally, that see, will be your challenge. Yes, sir. generally we see less satisfaction among the. Uh, uh, citizens of our country when it comes to the police but the criteria will be sir that uh, whenever they are approaching the police the police need to be very friendly with them they ask whatever the problem that is there and they must solve the problem in a given uh, time what problems actually what for what problems people come to police so right from small things to uh, the big crime like like if there is a uh, property disputes that is hap happening in the in the village if there is some someone is beating them, some some theft has happened. Someone is stolen their uh, bikes. So when they reach there, uh, so crime. Uh, yes, yeah, so they they become victims. Prevention of crime and related to the also women empowerment. When when women reach the police station, uh, sometimes they feel that their their cases are not. How right. you will ensure the quality of investigation and a crime? So the first is that I will ensure that there is a proper auditing of the forensic uh, mechanism, uh, and, and for example, the oh. forensic for the forensic uh, things that happen for in the police. Uh, yeah, then how it happens? Forensic thing what? Sir, I'm current, uh, currently forensic not. thing is very vague sort of thing. Sir, currently not aware about, uh, but I will. Um, I will try to learn but about. But what it. what are the components of forensic? Sir, it can be related to the measurements like the blood samples. Measurement. Uh, the blood sample. Blood sample of uh, uh, criminals. They will not be sitting in the police station and waiting for the SP that you come and collect these samples. Sorry, sir. I'm <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> we will now tell us actually in a democracy, yes. which are the important organs of parliamentary democracy. So the first is is the legislature, which make, makes the law. The second is the executive, which implement the policies. Third is the judiciary, which interpret the law and ensure that the constitutional rule of law is followed. And the fourth sir, the media and the civil society that hold uh, the government and the legislature into uh, hold them accountable. Now, in the present context, which one out of four is most powerful and which one is the weakest? Sir, I see that all of them play a very important role, but executive. Yeah, yeah they all play. Important. But executive, the but executive I see is implementing a lot of policy, and I no, see no, that. No. Which one is the powerful and which one is the weakest? Sir, I see executive uh, very powerful. Executive is powerful. Yes, sir. And and, and I any, see that. Any any example of that that you you feel that executive is more powerful. So there are there are lots uh, lots of laws that are brought through the root of ordinance like the farm laws. But that is only a root. Yeah. So bringing an ordinance, it doesn't show that you are very powerful. So then the reports are not that well not well discussed in the parliament. So that shows this institution is powerful, or it is scared. So I would say it is powerful. If you are not disclosing, who can crush the ordinance? <coughs> Sir, it can be caused by the judiciary. 
so sir the judiciary is powerful our judiciary is powerful mm. give example of one 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 example not not this one okay <clears throat> sir uh, very okay. important weapon very important mechanism through which so you can say that the judicial activism Judicial activism is not constitutional provision. It is already provision in the constitution. Sir, under Article One Forty Two. What? Ah, uh, to ensure uh, uh, complete justice, uh, the the court can decide. Uh, look into the different matters. Look into different matters doesn't make you more powerful. You have not read about judicial review. Yes, sir. Judicial level. Okay. Vitesh, uh, <coughs> you are playing football, uh, and simultaneously, uh, your career growth uh, growth shows something else. Okay, why it went down because of football only? Because you got eighty percent in tenth, uh, no, and sir, then sir. after twelfth you got seventy, and then by the engineering, you got around second grade only. Why is it so? Uh, so the first reason that I see that I didn't worked hard in in college. I should have worked hard, and. And, and this is the primary reason that I see, sir. Oh, so so you didn't work that, so you prepared in the last minutes before the examination. So, uh, to an extent, sir, it is right. Okay, is it right? So the problem, what is the problem that you see in the overall engineering preparation or the throughout these four years? What uh, what are the main main lacunas of the uh, engineering education in India? Because of the attitude of the students who prepare in the last minutes, or is it something else? Uh, so there are a lot of reasons. The first is uh, the adequate number of teachers. The second is related to the. But theories. India produces ten lakh engineers a year. Okay. So yes, sir. India see... produces more than ten lakh uh, engineers, but the employability is, is uh, like uh, is uh, is around like forty seven percent. So that the first is teacher, the second is sir the use of theories and um, the practical knowledge like the use uh, uh, those theories in in the lab that part is also not that is strong. And third sir the collaboration with the private sector. Okay, so you've been playing football and also you also analyze the football matches as well. Yes. And specifically Champions League, uh, UEFA Champions League and the EPL. Can you tell me uh, who is Karim Benzema? Sir Benzema currently is as a France uh, France national. He play from the France football team and also from the Real Madrid. Okay. And what is his latest achievement? Sir, currently in the last match with Manchester City, he scored one goal, the penalty, and and he scored like this season he had scored forty three goals and he is one of the chief contender of Ballon d'Or. Anything else uh, he has achieved in the form of goals? Sir, uh, he is the second highest goal scorer of Real Madrid. Okay, second highest. Still. And also, sir, really? in Champions League, he has crossed over eighty goals. Okay, he's crossed over eighty plus goals. Okay, so he's almost next after Ronaldo and Messi. You can say. Oh, they are not goals. like that. Is this uh -huh. very much below Ronaldo and Messi? Okay, so he's crossed eighty. Uh, they are on one forty or something. One thirty and then Messi is on. Okay, uh, what is the role of a coach and uh, in a football team? And where do you see the role of a captain? Okay. I feel that captain is not necessary because everything is done by the coach or the manager, as we say in the clubs. So the coach has a very important role because he set the tactics and he he decide that the movement of the player, he ensure team so, cohesion. So and captain to hatai dete hain to fir. Sir, in the in the team we need someone who can ensure coordination and also motivate them. I see that lot of good captains, Puyol or Cesar Aspi, they quite are. They always motivate their player even they are going <coughs> on one down. So that uh, so the, where do you put the coach or the captain hierarchy in the bureaucracy? At what level? Is it in the form of secretary? Coach will be in the form of secretary and captain will be in the form of SDM, DM. Where do you see? How can we? How can we replicate that thing? So the coach makes the policy. So he will be in the position of the secretary. Secretary. And, and, uh, And ensure and the captain ensure that the policy are well executed. So he'll be in the role of the district magistrate. District magistrate. Okay. Your father uh, is a retired police official. Can you tell me the hierarchy of the police right from <coughs> the lower level to the highest level? So there is constable. There is head constable. There is assistant uh, sub inspector. Then there is sub inspector. Then inspector. Then uh, S H O. Above that, SHO. SHO is not the hierarchy; it's a designation of post. 
sir uh, after after inspector sir uh, so can be sub inspector also and inspector yes, also uh, then uh, dsp and then sir sp so and for uh, in urban area there are uh, senior uh, superintendent of police then also sir uh, dig yeah. okay. then ig and and adgp and then dgp okay thanks okay so uh, Ritesh, we'll take you back for a few moments. Okay, Just stay in the waiting room for some while. Okay, we'll call you back for your feedback. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Have a seat, Ritesh. Thank you, sir. Ritesh, when is your interview due? Oh, sir, twenty third of May. Oh, that's right. Twenty third of May. So you have a lot of time, even to upgrade your knowledge. Which otherwise is good. So you are a uh, otherwise your performance is uh, good. There is no doubt about it. So, uh, but there are certain areas, Ritesh. I'm sure you will also appreciate. Yes, sir. Someone. Can you tell me how your performance went uh, in this mock interview? So it was good, but in some areas like related to the structure of the child uh, child development, yes, related that was the one police, area. the police part also, and the police part also. So some of the higher problems I was not able to articulate. And uh, when the question regarding the executive, uh, the, yes, sir. The, which the, is the, the most fourth important organ, fourth organ. organ, yes, sir, that part yeah, also. That also yes. So uh, this is the first time you will be appearing at the interview. No, sir, third time. Third time. Okay. So what were the marks which you obtained in the last two times? Sir, so last time. So for, for in the first interview, I got one forty-five, and the second time, one seventy. One seven zero. Yes. Okay. All right. So this time we hope that you will, uh, you should get more marks. Yes. How have you done your written paper? So well, sir. Very well. Okay. All right. So, uh, so let me come, uh, Ritesh, to some of the brass tacks of your interview. As I said, your performance is good. Uh, now, whenever we judge a uh, candidate, we judge it normally on three things: that is, knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So, your communication skills are fine. Uh, you were able to phrase good answers, structure them well. Choice of words was also good. Modulation was there. Presentation skills were good. So, as far as skill part is concerned, um, there is not much that requires to be done. Your communication skills are good. Since you will be asked to wear a mask, most likely, so yes. therefore you will have to slightly uh, your your intonation or your loudness may have to be more. Okay, sir. But that is uh, right now it was absolutely fine. But maybe after wearing a mask, so therefore that allows you can keep you know being slightly more louder. Your answers. Uh, then coming to your attitude. So attitude basically consists of uh, your positive, whether you are positive, looking forward, optimistic, and so on. So I can see that from your answers, you were quite positive and optimistic. So the attitude part is also good. Coming to the knowledge part. Now knowledge, uh, the thing which we see is that whether there is a mental alertness is there. You were mentally alert. Then whether uh, you are in a position to analyze, analyze the issues, so analytical skills. So most of the cases you are able to analyze, barring a few things which I am going to tell you. Your clarity of thought was there and you could think while standing on your legs. Uh, one or two places where we found that probably uh, you uh, came out quickly with the answer which were not really appropriate, wrong. So therefore, uh, whenever a question is asked, always first of all think about it then come out with the answer that will give you a much better form of answer because you will be able to you know uh, in churning inside your head will take place if you have any doubts you can always uh, muster up your thoughts write down on a piece of paper as you are already aware of there is a piece of paper and pencil lying in front of you on the table you can write your thoughts and then come out with the appropriate answer the uh, next thing is of course that uh, always you know prioritize your answer so if there is a problem what are the problems ailing jharkhand or what are the three things you would like to point out? Come out with the most important part yes, as sir. the first. No, prioritize your answers. Because sometimes if you give the right answer in the first instance, the panelists will say, all right, it is, you are fine. He will move on to the next question. And 20 minutes is the time which you will get, 20, 25 minutes. Try to uh, you know, take face as many questions as possible. That will go to your credit. And never uh, uh, accept or give answer if you are not sure about it. You could very politely say, sir, I do not know. If you know part of the answer, take it. You give part of the answer and then you say that I do not know this particular answer beyond that. And in support of your answers, 
Now, uh, always give examples. Always give examples. And if the question is a tricky one, which can go either way, there you have to be slightly careful. Do not come out with your uh, one particular side because there will there are two sides to every issue. Yeah. Such. So, Central Vista project or Article 370 or demonetization, Ayodhya temple also, hijab controversy. These are all issues where uh, people may have different views. Mm. So, if there is a court judgment in support of that, then always take the shelter behind the court judgment, like it happened in Ayodhya or in a hijab controversy. So, that will, uh, the further questions will stop then because the court judgment itself is the final word. Okay. And if there are no court judgments, always give both the sides. But if you are, if they persist in asking your view, then come out with the official side, official line of answer. So, reservation, do not criticize reservation. Always say that, yes, framers of constitution thought that the fruits of society do not reach certain sections of the society and therefore this was done. It was done temporarily for 10 years, again extended and maybe some fine tuning may be required. So, this kind of balanced answer would be good. Coming to specific question, you yourself said that the question regarding the, the, the social problems and the children issue particularly and the administrative structure yes. relating to that. So that particular thing you have to prepare. So in fact, you have to prepare uh, uh, you know, your answer in respect of the entire district administration and how the administrative structure is there. So in the, uh, there is the, the line organization, so from the minister down to the district officer, Understand the minister, the secretary, the HOD and down to the district officer, whether it is child welfare officer or <coughs> any other. Understand that. Then understand that what are the different district offices which are there. It may be almost two dozen are there. So agriculture and power yeah. and irrigation, all those things. Since your father has been in the police yeah. service, he will be able to guide you also much more in that direction. And then president selection also that question you have to prepare. I would strongly suggest to you, you have got a lot of, uh, uh, still you have got uh, time. Uh, so 23rd May is, you have a lot of time. Read constitution very carefully. Okay. Everything relating to fundamental rights, fundamental duties and directive principle and preamble and president and vice president, civil services, all India services, how they figure, the writs, the powers, 32, 226, all these things you study. All articles bear constitution also read the criminal procedure code yes those are the you know the powers of the district magistrate also understand the revenue administration in jharkhand uh, the in the state to which you belong whatever is the revenue administrative structure understand that and what are the duties of the revenue officers so solving the inter uh, the problems uh, the disputes between uh, agriculturalists or farmers that is one updating of land records and so on okay and then also uh, understand the election process because an rp act you study that both the acts uh, and then issues connected with that so code of conduct and uh, then simultaneously elections of election this thing which is in the going on recalling of the public representatives e-voting so these are all state funding of elections these are all issues which are in the you know in the in generally in the in debate going on so everything about election and in the district what are the role of district election officer the returning officer what is the process of election how returning officer conducts it and so on even the simple question like why is he called a returning officer you should know that why is he called a returning officer then lastly uh, the the disaster management so floods droughts uh, covid all these things how will you handle Hypothetical situation can be given to you. So, you have to understand that what is that thing. NDMA you will contact and the, you know, the officers, how will you involve them. The role of the, the, the aid to the civil society, uh, civil authorities from army, from air force. All these things connected with that. Huh? Then a uh, question regarding e-waste was, so e-waste you should know. So, the any, any everything about environmental sustainability and uh, the, the wet waste and the dry waste and the e-waste. So e-waste e is not dumped into the into the uh, into the areas where, where wet the dry waste can be dumped. So but e-waste cannot be dumped. There is a specific policy and that policy you should know that. Okay. 
and then uh, generally about uh, the the different foras, different meetings which have taken place. So, uh, RIO, RIO plus ten, RIO plus twenty, Paris, United Nations organization, which uh, which which are coordinating efforts of environmental sustainability, and also the role of other United Nations organization. So, in the case of child, in the case of education, case of trade, all these things. What are the global problems? Uh, some of the questions you were able to come out very well. For example, the question regarding uh, related to football, you were able to come out. Even the roles of the coach uh, and, the, uh, and the captain, these questions you were able to come out exceedingly well. And uh, then uh, question regarding uh, uh, when the public feels very happy in so far as the performance of the police is concerned, you should be able to get that thing because the essentially is that if uh, there is a peace, you know, law and order is maintained, then the, the public is most happy. And if the corruption is brought down in the system, the public is extremely happy. If they are able to, they are responsive, they hear the public grievances, FIRs can be lodged without any problem, these are the ways the public will be happy. And then which is, uh, and understand the functions of the police, which is very important because your father is in police. So the, the crime prevention, then a crime detection, then crime investigation, and then finally lodging uh, the case, the chalan in the court for prosecution. So all these things and preventive uh, sections which are there. So 1067 which is prevailing. So you, you should be very, and then the police act. Okay. So you should know that. And then uh, in a democracy, which are the most important organs? So there uh, the question was, which is the most powerful? So at one point of time, you were almost tempted to say executive, then probably you wavered and you thought that judiciary is more. So you should be very clear about such kind of questions which are there. And you you started out rightly that all the organs <laughs> are important. <Yeah>. But <laughs> you are not. Right. So, so it is the right answer. You can't criticize or you say that one is better than the other. In reality, things may be different at different you know, governments. But the, the fact of the matter is everyone is performing its duty and uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned judicial overreach. Okay. Uh, no, uh, do not say this okay. because every, every is, is, even legislature is important. Sir, so what will be the standard answer for the this? The standard question? answer would be that all of them are performing oh, their yeah, duties yeah, within the scope as provided under the constitution. Okay. That's about it. And if sir will ask that. If they will ask about judicial overreach, you can say that judicial intervention at times had led to very, very good results also. So, it can be regarding uh, NGT intervening into the pollution of Delhi and so on. So, sometimes judicial uh, intervention in the form of uh, activism, it leads to good results also. So, therefore, you can say wherever executive may not be uh, proactively pursuing a particular thing, sometimes the judiciary comes in. In fact, it helps the executive, you know, in bringing about a change in the system. So, you can say it's a positive light rather than... Uh, in a negative and that you can say in terms of that judiciary is custodian of the Indian constitution. Yeah. So by virtue of powers actually vested in judiciary, yeah. the, the, the you see mechanism like judicial review, it has an advantage. Okay, sir. Uh, it, it can oversee the actual okay. decisions and you see okay. various laws by the executive. Yeah. So use it to your advantage by saying that judiciary is there to protect the constitution. Sometimes even the executive, uh, you know, is. Uh, unable to take a decision because of you know certain social and political considerations yeah. so they leave it to the judiciary they let a judicial pronouncement come yeah then we will all be satisfied and sometimes you know there there is a specific constitutional provision where you can refer it to the judiciary yes. like for example in the case of syl you know the matter was referred punjab and haryana they were at loggerheads so then they were referred also. President has the power to yes, refer it. Under 143. Yes. So uh, uh, that's about it. Your uh, uh, And then uh, some questions regarding Reserve Bank of India and marginalized and poor, what schemes and three fundamental things you talked about. They were fine. Your answers were fine. In most debates, you were not able to. So you can study India and its relations and some of the burning issues. So the, the, the Dalai Lama and Tibet and POK and uh, Sri Lanka around surrounding and Pakistan, India and its neighbors, the world order, the Ukraine, Russia problem, what challenges are there and what is it got to offer to India in terms of 
advantage what India is going to get out of it. So those all things in terms of, and it has given an opportunity to this country to become self-reliant now. So every cloud has a silver lining. So maybe this is going to help us in, in being totally self-dependent and self-reliant. So that's again a good thing. And uh, so that's about the overall uh, thing which I have explained to you. Uh, and study the public policies particularly for women, children, senior citizens, scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and disadvantaged other uh, sectors like uh, the people with disabilities. Sir, I would just like to add yeah, three. Sure. See, you <coughs> just mentioned when Jens have asked about the presidential election. Yes. So you have to study more on that. But you should be very clear that all the members of parliaments are not entitled yes. to vote. Oh, the yes. elected members that were members. Those only are the 12 only nominated members. Assemblies members. also. Yes. Only elected ones are entitled. They form the part of electoral college. So yes. here you could not, you cannot give uh, an answer which is not factual. You have to be very correct that there are the eligible people, you know, who are eligible to vote. What forms the electoral college? So constitution reading would be a good idea if you devote your time one full day to just read the constitution. So many answers would come about only by reading the constitution and a lot many questions you will be able to field with that. Okay, you are very good and you can be outstanding. There is no doubt about it. And last time, as a, as you mentioned, that you obtained one seven zero. So we will definitely like to see you getting around two hundred. Just go back and uh, start taking this as a challenge that this time I have to reach that thing and get the service to which I am aspiring for. And you will get it. Okay. Any other thing you want to ask? Sir, like there are some questions where I can think that I can do well, uh, like the presidential election. I was not able to structure it. So how can I, I how can I ensure that think I can before. I can bring out a lot of uh, good words? Think before. Think Just think for first 10 seconds. It will come out of Sir, can I take uh, like seconds. more than 5 seconds? Yeah, 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 yeah. Seconds. You, can, yeah. you can even write oh. down your points as uh, sir. And you can ask for more time. <laughs> In case it is taking more time, you can ask actually. You can, it will be very good if you write down the points on that piece of paper which is lying in front of you. It will give you help in structuring up your thoughts. Then come out with the answer. Okay, sir. It will always help you. Will you be sporting a beard there? No, sir. I will remove it now. I will completely remove it. Okay. I'll just give you one example. <clears throat> when the question was asked about the presidential election, if you mention two phrases, electoral college on all elected members, elected, elected then elected. your job is done. Means the candidate knows the actual process. Okay. All the best to you. Thank you will do well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Academy. Let's crack it.